Welcome back to a new episode here at Piss Imported Secret Laboratories. For this particular episode, we are going to install a re LTH reed valve into Matt's Magello 198 cylinder. We just got this. This particular one is made uh, for a 28 to 30 millimeter carburetor. It comes with uh, stage six reed valve assembly. Uh, it, I, was, I was quite surprised with the reed valve assembly about how nice it was. Um, not only does it come with uh, the reeds that are on there, it actually comes with an extra set of reeds as well. Um, so I thought that was a nice feature. Uh, carbon fiber reeds, um, all that fun stuff. And then it came with these, uh, these reed stuffers in different sizes and they go up to 28 millimeter, which is um, the size carburetor that we're using because we're gonna pair this with a 20 mil 28 millimeter PHBH. Um, this is one of my favorite carburetors. I use this on practically all the engines I build right now. Um, and that's because most of the engines that I build are not, you know, rev to 12,000 RPM screamers. A lot of these guys, um, they just ride, you know, they, they, they want something that they can tour with. Um, and this is a great carburetor for that. So, um, uh, I was happy that he decided to go with the 28. Um, and then the LTH reed valve, I thought that was a good choice. All right. So now we're going to actually put some holes into Matt's piston and we need to determine, you know, where those holes are going to be. The easiest way, um, there's no rings on this right now. It's just the piston. Um, in the cylinder it's all torqued up and everything you can just take a marker and stick it in there you know and as a guide let's say and then you can just drag the piston past it right so then that puts a mark on that side and then you can do the same here and you can do the same here and then on that and there and then you know exactly the width um, of the intake so we now we have to determine you know the height and i cheated okay so what i did is i took a rubbing off of an amola 186 piston and when you go to like cambridge lambretta you know in the uk and you say i want to put a reed valve on my magello you know essentially what they're going to do is they're going to sell you an amola piston or and um, and then an LTH reed valve, because that's all they do. They you know bolt it in with the Amola piston and away you go. Well, Matt's a 198, so everything's a little off uh, um, on the on the Amola piston, but a few things you know do work for this particular one. Now, if you had a, a, a Magello 186, this would be an exact you know one to one. But um, the first thing that I needed to do was I needed to, to figure out how high the uh, center of these holes was gonna be from the bottom. So I just, you know, put my ruler on there. Um, and then as you can see, you know, this one, these are 16 millimeters wide at their widest point. So, you know, I could just put my ruler on there and I could say, okay, you know, at, uh, You know, 16 millimeters at the at the widest point. So with that in place, I can go up, you know, 20 and then another eight. So at 28 millimeters is gonna be the center point um, for each hole. So, and then from there, you know, I know that it's gonna be eight millimeters up and eight millimeters down. So I cheated. Um, I, I took my, my measurement, I figured it out that it was 28 millimeters to center. And then we just take our ruler and we measure off the bottom of the piston, 28 millimeters. And that gives me my center, my center point. And then I can go eight millimeters above and eight millimeters below. And I know exactly how big my windows are going to be. All right. So here we are with mats and I have measured it. And then this is really close up. So, but as you can see, I measured my, you know, my 28 millimeters up to center. And then uh, from there, I went eight millimeters up and eight millimeters below. And then I have my side lines, which we scrolled in one of the previous shots into there. And that's where my windows are gonna go. So here we go. Piston, the window is about to close. 
about to close when the normal window, you know, when the this piston ported would close. And all of a sudden, so that's starting to close. You can see that pink line showing up and that's where the windows are gonna start to open. And then I go down there and you can see when I go all the way to bottom dead center, the windows are still a little bit open. So we have our piston mark now. We have our, uh, our lower limit, our upper limit, and then our two sides. Um, what I did at that point is I drew a straight line um, between the corners and that'll give me the center line, the center point, and then I just punch that with my uh, spring actuated punch here. And um, as you can see, I have it clamped in my vise, and then I also, you know, put a towel in there just to uh, not mar it. And you don't want to clamp it too tight, just enough to hold it, <clears throat> because you don't want to distort the piston itself. And, uh, and we're just going to drill that, and we'll drill it really slow. It doesn't have to be, you know, I'm not, it's not a race. We'll actually jump up now to the big one. And this is just a half inch drill bit. It's not big enough to uh, fill the entire thing, but we'll finish it off with the uh, burr. And now we'll actually just go back with a burr and uh, finish it all off. And now that we have the holes cut, we're actually gonna go back and then we'll finish it with uh, my Dremel and you know a sanding disc. And that's just to you know, smooth out the burrs and stuff. And now that that's done, we're actually just gonna go back with our hand file and we're just gonna chamfer the edges. And the final step for Matt's piston is that we're gonna remove all these scribe marks and everything. So to do that, um, I'm gonna, you know, wet sand it. Um, I'm gonna wet sand this one with uh, WD-40 as my lubricant and some 600 grade sandpaper. Moving on to the cylinder, you know, if I set the reed valve up here, you'll notice that it's hanging off a little bit right here. And the reason for that is that it's actually interfering with some of the fins here. So you can see I, I made some marks uh, for the material that we're gonna have to trim back to get the reed valve so that it actually will sit you know, above the stud holes. And how you remove the uh, material from the cylinder is entirely up to you. So the fins have been removed and now we need to um, match our, our transfer here between the uh, intake. So we just gotta match the intake on the, on the cylinder to the intake on the uh, reed valve. And to do that, I'm gonna show you what I do and also tell you what other people do. So. For me, I use, I, you know, I bought some of this stuff. It's a, it's a non-drying Prussian blue and they use this essentially as a, as a imprint. All right, now we're just gonna put the intake on and I already uh, determined where I wanted the intake to go because as you can see, you know, on the LTH it's adjustable as to where it goes because it fits both, um, small block and large block cases so and we're just going to squeeze it down and then really all we do is just unbolt it again and and then that'll leave an imprint and with that squeezed out you can see um i just went with a marker there and i and i drew a you know exactly where the intake's going to run um and then that's the material that i need to remove and now we're just going to remove the material and you know coming back to the idea of just use whatever uh tools that you have i'm using my die grinder so we'll go ahead and uh do that <laughs> last thing we have to do before we uh put it all together and test fit everything and uh, make sure everything's working correctly is we have to cut the gasket um for the carb manifold so that it matches the uh inlet on the cylinder um and how I like to do that is I'll just take an X-Acto knife and you know, I'll bolt the, uh, the gasket down to the cylinder and then I just go back with it, uh, an X-Acto knife and just trace that out. And then I'll actually finish it with a uh, file. And now that I have it roughed in, I'll just go back with my uh, file and then that, I can just clean the, the gasket face up, you know, the gasket edges up. And there it is, oh, one matched gasket. 
Now, since starting on this project, um, I decided to reach out to my buddy Adam at Soul Power Scooters to get his opinion on a couple of things. And one of the things I asked him about was, you know, should I cut, trim away the bottom of the skirt on the piston? And um, as you can see on the uh, Magello piston, it's reinforced already to do that. And he said to go ahead and do that because that is at one of the points when it's drawing the most amount of fuel so you want to be able to uh, feed it at that moment so he said to go ahead and uh, trim that away and then i also asked him about the uh, the intake port or not the intake port excuse me the uh, the boost port and the cylinder on the uh, magello and um, originally you know it has this little boost port right here on the piston and then there's a port up here um, that it matches up to and it's not connected to the to the uh, to the intake port itself and he said to go ahead and connect that port to the intake port because that again is it's the path of least resistance instead of the fuel having to travel through here and you know take a roundabout way to where it needs to go to just go ahead and um connect those so i went ahead and did that i still got some cleaning to do there um to get it finished up but once i'm done with that then we'll uh we'll be able to uh test fit this and i should say that before um we go any farther that if any of this is a little bit much for you or you just don't want to deal with it and you're located in the u.s or maybe even if you're not um you know you can go ahead and reach out to adam at soul power scooters and he's a great guy and i've done a lot of work with him in the past um and i continue to do a lot of work with him and i, I definitely recommend him to anybody who will listen to me so um yeah there's a plug for adam um thanks for helping me out buddy all right last test fit um before we wrap this video up um as you can see when I bring this up, you can see the skirt where I cut it. There's a little bit here on the edge that doesn't match up with the port right there. And I marked that. Um, so what I need to do next is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, uh, round that out a little bit just so it's not blocking the port. But otherwise, everything else looks good. And uh, we'll be able to wrap this up. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.